Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I'm Evil Mike, and I got a review for you. From Image Comics, this is Two Graves, issue number one. It is written by uh, Genevieve Valentine, um, art by Ming Doyle and Annie Wu, letters by Lee Loveridge, and then um, letters by Ad Adaya Budakar. Um, I know I mispronounced, especially the last one. There's no disrespect there. Try my best, but. Um, and that goes with this book as well. This book, um, I want to say, it, it's it's a great read. The art is fantastic. Um, there's a lot of the unknown in this book, but we'll get there. Um, so one of the unknowns is I don't know the names of our two main characters. Um, this one being a girl and the other one being a guy. Um, I kind of have an idea of who the, the other main character is. Um, but basically we are caught up with this girl and she's walking in the middle of nowhere and she walks up and grabs this earth and literally like eats it. Um, and then she kind of walks into a diner. Um, she kind of stumbles around a little bit and she walks over to a jukebox and starts to play a song. This guy we meet, he kind of walks up to her and asks her to play a song ask her if she's you know interested in seeing America and stuff like that and she's like heck yeah I want to get out of this town while it's going on there is some dialogue coming from our main character about how she wants to get out of the town um, so the next scene we are caught up with them in the truck uh, we do find out that this guy's name is John um, she like all of a sudden knows it and it surprises the guy with knowing his name he doesn't remember telling her um, she explains that he didn't and it was actually another woman that told her and it was when she ate that ground when she ate that ground it's where that guy John had buried um, Anna Marie we find out Anna Marie had done the same thing where she hopped in a truck with this guy John he took her out killed her and, and buried her somewhere in the desert or something like that somehow this girl knew what like where that girl was and went there I guess found her ate the dirt and somehow got her memories or something and um, that's kind of what led her to finding John um, the next scene he kind of starts to get aggressive or whatever and she's like well it doesn't matter it's too late for you anyways and the next step we see our other main character this guy right here um, as soon as he sees the guy, I mean, the guy's kind of teleporting everywhere. He has like this weird flame headish thing going on. There is detail in, in the guy's head. I'll kind of show you later on. Um, kind of like over here. Um, but, but he is not human. I mean, you can tell because he's teleporting around. Um, the way he kills John, I mean, he literally, like, she smashes his head into the window and he's like coming through the glass. He's not breaking the glass. It's just like the glass isn't there for him. Um, next up we have the guy John on the ground and she basically says that she wants him buried somewhere where no one will find him and the next thing he just states that the earth is so vast that he can bury him like way down at the bottom and no one will ever find him and John's just gone. They get back in the truck and the the uh, let's just call him the man um, kind of ask her where she wants to go and and he he already kind of because there's some you know he talks in these blue and black bubbles and she's the white but there's narration that's coming from him mostly at this point and he's kind of describing the story about how she doesn't have that much time that she's already like dead or something like that um, or in the process of dying because he mentions when they get to like the edge of the water or something like that her time will be up um, but when he asked her where they were going he kind of like answers himself in his head and he just mentions the, the word hunting which it seems they've been doing like she was tracking down this murderer and used him to get rid of him um, but basically she starts explaining that that you know she needs to eat and she's hungry and he kind of like offers her this this it looks like a candy bar or something like that and he even like narrates in his head that she shouldn't take this from him or eat it 
and she even kind of jokes, well, how many bites does it take, you know? Like she says, so what's the deal, a month in hell for every bite, kind of thing. And in Greek mythology, that and it goes into it. It goes into Poseidon, yeah, Poseidon. It goes into Persephone's story about how, you know, she ended up eating the pomegranate seeds while she was in hell. And he, it, it, it's for me, it was kind of random. And it, this part is so. It's not really. I'm not gonna say it. It's written really weird. I know the story. Um, it's been such a long time. But the way this it comes in, it, it I mean, it's beautiful art and everything, but basically, in a nutshell, it's explaining that, like, if she wouldn't have stopped, that her hunger would have been, like, everlasting, and even, like, like Hades would have bowed down to the, to the hunger of Poseidon or something like that, what is the sum up of the story. And it just mentions on how, like, that it's going off of one saying that the little girl said about, like, how she could be so, you know, she could be so hungry, it could be never ending, and then he gives us that story. Um, the book just jumps up them back to them after this like short little the Greek mythology and like recap on <laughs> Persephone, but um, they're ba they're basically like they're traveling together. As they're traveling together, they have to make this stop. Um, we kind of get a sense of what what he's doing. Um, but basically the, it's like they end up in the middle of nowhere and it's like this long like winding trail it's, it's somewhere it's supposed to be in Notlands Landing California because there is like a postcard that shows the same cliff on the back but um, they do end up walking up this long cliff there is this conversation about like what's going to happen when they see them and he states, well, they can't see me, but I don't know what, what's going to happen when they see you, how they're going to perceive you. And it kind of, it's kind of a clue into what's coming because they, they end up going to this house. There's a conversation of whether they should break in. The guy mentions that no door can stay locked or closed for him. He just kind of walks to the door. She even like makes a joke about this, that she could have done the same thing. She just would have lock picked it. Um, but basically he walks over to this old lady and there's like a one sentence thing said between both of them um, and he had, he kind of like because it's like there's still weeds in the garden I, I got tired and he's like weeds are lovely it's all right but basically he's like a grim reaper like death or whatever because the second he touches her she passes away that was the reason that they they you know were there all along um, he even states that because she was like, "What? What did she say?" And he's like, "Oh, I don't know." And it doesn't matter, you know. He was just there to to perform that action or whatever. Um, and it, it after that, it kind of goes back over to like, you know, he he kind of goes over like in the narration part, he goes over saying that like that this little girl that he's traveling with. I'm assuming because it's it's all we we don't have a name yet. Of the of either people in the story, um, but basically it's a conversation about how she's kind of a mistake and his mistake, like she, he shouldn't be traveling with her. But it, it kind of led me to believe that somehow they're connected family-wise. The way he says it, like oh, she's my mistake. Um, while while he's kind of narrating this, he kind of points out some stars, and it's supposed to be like the brightest star that we can see on Earth. And he even makes a comment about like that it is headed this way and by the time it finally gets here that the earth would be dead and and born again anew that's how long it's going to take to get here after that happens she kind of mentions something about like like um she mentions that like something about like she can't die and she doesn't understand why she can't die she walks off to this cliff which you see right here she walks over to the edge and the next scene she's just like literally walking on air like she literally tries to take her own life and either he's stopping her because they do show him right here or the, I don't know the world's just stopping her like she literally can't die we only have that for instance in this scenario but it's something that you know that um that she mentions at the end um, and I'm trying to look in for, for the paragraph somewhere Um, that's where she says it like everything dies like right here and then she says like everything but me 
and that's kind of where this book leaves us off there is like one one other like page where it shows some onlookers seeing her do her little magic trick with that guy on the side of the cliff and her like just floating there but it's like three like you know they were dirt biking or something it looks like kids um but besides that there's like i want to say it's three pages and it's called the columbiarium um but it is it's it's very interesting but it's all like different passages about like kind of uh, all about stars like where do stars go when they die what is a dead star and uh, what will our star become? Will everything die? Do people really become stars when they die? Um, but it, it, I mean, it, it was all very interesting and, and it's all like documented and backed up. It's all real stuff. Uh, we do get a cover to the next issue. Um, but like I could, like I said in the beginning, it's, it's a, it's a weird book, but not because it was bad or anything. It's a good read. It's a, it's a quick read, um, even though it was a little wordy at times. But honestly, the the way the book progresses, it, it kind of like a little roller coaster. I wouldn't say a big roller coaster, but a little roller coaster because there's no action, not really. But there was a couple different things that got me into the book, especially like trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And who is he? And, you know, how is she able to not die? Is it because she's with him? You know, some kind of thing. Did did he go to her when she was dying and for some reason couldn't do it? And now that's why she's able to not die. And she just doesn't understand it. Uh, maybe she forgot, you know, that moment. Um, I don't know. Hey, but that's my review. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below if you read this book, what you think about it. You know, um, what your thoughts on what's to come. Honestly, it reminds me of a couple of different things after we got to the end. Kind of like the mini Desolate with a star. I'm pretty sure some other people will say, like, Sandman, you know, um, I don't know. Let me know. What are your thoughts? I want to hear them. All right, guys. More reviews coming. I will see you later. Bye!